Cool. Welcome to my TED Talk. Always wanted to say that. <laughs> I remember growing up, we only got new clothes three times a year. In January, we would get the school uniform, and in June, if we're lucky, we would get um, new clothes for the change of season. And in December, we would get the Christmas clothes. Yeah, Christmas clothes were the best because that's when we really got to drip out. And this was, um, but throughout, all my clothes were passed down from my older siblings. And this was a family as well as my community. Have you, have you thought about how much does your wardrobe cost to the environment? That blue jacket you're wearing, or that beautiful uh, bright yellow blazer <laughs> that looks so good on you today. Consider that 20% um, of wastewater around the world comes from fabric dyeing and treatment. Today, South Africa's youth, like other youth around the world, are high-volume consumers of uh, mass-produced clothing items, and often looking to be culturally informed and updated individuals. So we follow, um, so we follow fashion trends and look for cheap alternatives to the high-end, expensive um, fashion that we see through media. For the love of fashion and style, we buy into this toxic production chain that does more harm than good for our local economies, the environment, and just the general global ecosystems. You may ask, how exactly is fashion toxic? The fashion industry um, is responsible for 10% of annual global carbon emissions. That's all um, international flights, and marine time sh um, shipping combined. Also, the fashion industry produces 52 new collections annually. That's like 50, uh, a collection every week. And 50% of those uh, clothing items produced annually end up in landfills. Now, this is unsustainable and has devastating environmental and social effects. There are a lot of other issues with fast fashion. Uh, there's a high Mater raw material use, uh, excessive chemical, chemical use, illegal and exploitative um, practices, labor practices and pollution. <clears throat> there's a lot of, also there's a lot of um, organizations that are putting pressure on uh, the fashion industry. Organizations like um, Fashion Revolution, and um, some, some fashion retailers are starting to react. Fashion retailers like Zara have started stocking up live collection um, which are made from recycled plastic. While this is a good uh, thought, but their main objectives will always remain uh, to sell more garments and maximize profit. This is promising, and I wanted... Um, these initiatives are promising, and I wanted to be a part of that. Um, so I, so I started, uh, um, I so I started uh, being involved in this sector. But my fascination with fashion and our consumer habits started in 2015 when I founded an organization called Sneakers for Change. And basically, what I would do was collect uh, sneakers from the predominantly wealthy suburbs of Joburg and distribute them in townships and in the inner city to orphanage homes, skating schools, and other sporting clubs. But this is when I noticed our consumer habits and how devastating it is to the environment. To date, I have collected over 10,000 pairs of sneakers uh, and distributed them. 10,000 pairs. People have uh, numerous of clothing items just sitting under their beds, uh, and their wardrobes that they haven't seen for years. Uh, it was through this learning that I started Swift Lab. Swift Lab is a swap, thrift, and a cycling fashion brand that promotes uh, sustainability and local um, creativity in my, in my community. I believe we can all contribute to a more sustainable future by engaging in clothing swaps and uh, using art, design, and craft 
uh, to prolong the lifespan of clothing items that you already uh, already have. Uh, clothing swaps are gaining uh, a lot of popularity currently, and this is because you can have a whole new wardrobe without spending any money. <laughs> So at Swift Lab, we have a system where people bring in their pre-loved items, they get points for them, and use these points to buy from what we have recycled and updated. We all, sh we all should look at, uh, uh, um, we should not look at sustainability as a barrier to the fashion industry but also as an opportunity to unleash creativity and new ways to prolong fashion items and also uh, walk through a better system, a more sustainable way of doing things. There's a lot of DIY uh, techniques that you can do, like patchwork, painting on your clothes, and embroidery. And all of these techniques can help uh, um, give a new life to your clothing items and prolong the lifespan of them and prevent them from ending up in, in landfills. We don't need the fashion industry to tell us uh, which trends to follow. We can create our own trends, our own style, our own personality into our clothes. A more sustainable um, alternative which is affordable and sustainable uh, a more sustainable a more sustainable and affordable alternative to the fast fashion. Thank you. Thank you.